Okay, so let's continue continue with our uh, Kafka Python series. And so we have covered three videos. So in the first video, we have learned uh, why do we need Kafka? Because we start learning Kafka. So we should know like why we should learn Kafka. Like what is the problem statement which Kafka is going to solve and why Kafka is like useful. And then we see, okay, what are the Kafka components and some basic architecture diagram. Then, uh, so till now we have covered, okay, what is Kafka? Then we see, okay, how if we have to do the hands-on exercise, like we have to produce some message, we have to consume some message, we have the some infrastructure available, right? So uh, we come uh, come up with some approach, okay, instead of installing the Apache Kafka directly from their website, we will use the Red Panda, which is more or less similar, and it is dockerized, so it is very easy to set up. Right, because we are not going to more focus on our infrastructure. We are going to more focus on our how to produce, how to consume and some other bits. So we install the Red Panda and we see uh, Red Panda has been successfully installed and we we spin up the Red Panda using one broker. So, and then in, in this video, we are going to see Red Panda console. So what is Red Panda console? Uh, Red Panda console is a like a developer friendly UI for managing your Kafka Red Panda workloads. So when you created your cluster, so as an example, you created this cluster, right? But and either using Apache Kafka or either using Red Panda or any other thing. So you just start your scripts to, to like uh, set up this infrastructure. But by your naked eyes, how you are going to see this, right? Every time you are not going to run the commands, right? Okay, is there any broker available or is there any topics available? How, how many partition? What is the message? So you like there are one things there are two things like either you set up this thing uh only and then you run some commands which we already run uh to figure it out okay uh the broker is on which node all this information how many topics how many partitions all this information we can get the other thing is uh maybe there should be some ui as soon as uh, like uh uh, the infrastructure has been set up then we should like uh, access this infrastructure information using some ui so the, the red panda console is uh, a facility which is going to provide uh, to us to develop friendly ui right so how to do that so you can go to the hub.docker.com so it is also the docker image so if you search red panda and till now we have covered uh, how to start the red panda engine real time engine now we have the red panda console red panda console is a developer friendly ui right and for managing kafka workload so if you click on it right so we have to use this uh, like a, a command that's it so if you click on it it will move to your github repository so you could see this kind of a UI will be like uh, available to us. This kind of a UI where you, we could see topics. Uh, if we create the topics, we can rather than manually running some commands, we can see the topics. We can see the schema registry. We can consume some messages. Uh, we can see the message size. We can see the message format. So many things we can see. So this is very useful. right? And uh, along with that useful, it is very easy. All right. So how to set up? So we have this Docker Compose uh, up, uh, like uh, ready for us. And the group is Red Panda service. We already covered the Red Panda. Now we will spin up the Red Panda uh, console. So let's create a, another service Red Panda console. Now the thing is, I don't know what is the content. So the same same thing like in the last video, what we did is, so there is a one link which I provided. So this is the link. So let me open that. It is on the Red Panda website only. So they have provided some sample. So if we click on it and if we reveal the Docker Compose, so we already spin up the Red Panda. So we already spin up the Red Panda, which is fine. Now we have to spin up the console. All right. So just copy paste each and everything. So copy the image because if you are spinning up the Red Panda, you, you need to mention, okay, which image uh, you want to use. Then container name. It is not mandatory, but we are going to give Red Panda console. Then we have the entry point. Just copy paste. You don't need to remember all these things. You have to just follow the documentation. Then we have the command. Just copy paste. Then we have the environment. Then we have the config file path. 
then we have the console config file then we have the kafka so this is the main thing so here kafka under the kafka we are mentioning the broker so basically we said we are going to set up some ui but how that because ui is because we are spinning some different service right how this service because when we start our red panda our red panda is going to start using this service like right? either we start using one node or two node or three node right and whatever we are creating so it is going to uh, create either we create topic either we send message it is going to store uh, within the red panda which which i highlighted right but how that thing we are going to see in red panda console so we need to connect red panda console with the red panda right so here we we are mentioning okay we we have to mention okay which broker broker means like uh, which red panda cluster uh, it should connect so that it should get the information from that right so if we create the topic uh, in this it should be visible on console so we should we need to connect so we have mentioned Kafka broker Red Panda 9092. Uh, just to ignore everything for the time being. And then schema registry. I am going to explain schema registry. Then we have enable true. Then we have the URLs. Then we have Red Panda. So then we have the admin api then we have enable true then we have the urls now we need to like uh, uh, because uh, this is the console so console will be accessible using browser so we need to expose some ports so let expose the ports ports will be 8080 okay so ports will be activity uh, and it should be up once the red panda will be up so it is depend upon red panda so red panda is this this service so whatever the name you are going to mention here the same name we have to mention here because if this is going to spin up first then this is going to be fair because this said I need Red Panda Kafka. I need Red Panda API. So first Red Panda needs to be up, up. Then only UI is going to get some information. Okay. So let's uh, uh, just see this information. So we have mentioned because this thing is like mandatory. These two things. We have to connect Red Panda console with the Red Panda. So basically we have to connect this. So which URL we are going to use here? Which URL we are going to uh, we are going to use here do we need to use 9092 or do we need to use 19092 so red panda console and red panda both will be spin up within the docker network right so within the docker network local host 9092 is for external one external means when i am running outside the docker maybe using some python code or something which i am running outside the docker if from outside the docker network i have to access then i will use this external external like ips and port but uh, using this uh, red panda uh, using the, uh, the red panda console is going to connect with the red panda within the node docker network so if it is going to connect within the docker network then we have to use the internal port so internal port is 19092 why they have mentioned 9092 because you remember like uh, their internal port is 9092 and in the last video we we just swap this port to to like uh, make our task easy but we have to adjust so in this way you have like learn one more thing okay what is the use of this internal port so internal port is when any 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 other service which is running inside the docker network want to connect with the kafka cluster then we have to use this internal so as an example red panda console so red panda console within the docker network so we can use internal one, red panda 9092 for producer and consumer which are external so we have to use the local host 9092 right red panda api red panda api is similarly it's internal so red panda 
and it is like by default running on the 9644 so it is though it is not mentioned here schema registry schema registry we have we have to use a, like a internal uh, scheme schema registry is basically like uh, we have to use 8081 so i think for schema registry maybe let let's try uh, let's try what will happen let's try uh, maybe it it should be also 18081 let me give it 18081 because this is also internal is going going to connect with internally and internal post, port is 18081 so let's try to spin up whether uh, any error come or not docker compose up so it is going to pull both the images red panda console and the red panda but first red panda is going to be started and then red panda console is going to be started all right so let's wait either it's going to fail or either it's going to be start if it is fail we will debug okay what is the issue so it is creating some default network so it has started it has started it has started so now looks it's connected it even successfully connected with the uh, red panda console also started and red panda also started. so let's uh, go to your browser and search for localhost 8080 so you could see this is a very beautiful ui and this is the overview if you click on the topics here we can even manually create the topics right and or whatever the topic you are going to create using command line you we will be able to see here so this is the schema registry we can create the schema which we are going to come like uh, learn in some other videos and the consumer groups we are going to learn some other videos security connectors so, so many things like uh, we are here right mm -hmm. so this is uh, the red panda console is up our red panda console is now finally up and running so let's try so let's try the same same like uh, commands to create our chat rooms let me go here so the cluster info uh, or like we have red panda uh, up and uh, only one node is available which is fine so let's create a topic so you see i have created a topic but now red panda console is connected with the red panda so whether that topic is seen here or not let's refresh it so you could see my topic is visible here and if i click on it i could see there are no message right now let's try to publish some message right try to publish some message and hey i am first message i am second message i am third message so that's it so we have published the message so let's refresh it so let's go to the chat room so you could see these three messages are available so first will publish on the offset 0 second publish on the offset 1 the another one is going to publish on the offset 2 and now here we are able to see offset partition on which partition is going to publish what is the time channel what is the key what is the value and what is the value of that message right so we are able to see like uh, everything here and let it let try to consume the message so and we can consume all the messages in a single go all right so we have consumed all the messages okay so this is like very useful the message is not going to be deleted here because uh, uh the retention period is like uh, uh for seven days so it is not going to be deleted here doesn't matter whether you have consumed or not all right so we have spin up our like uh, red panda uh, console as well so this is very like a short video but very useful because in the coming video we are not going to like uh, check using some commands we if whatever the topics we are going to create we will just see here okay whether the uh, topics has been created whatever the message we are going to publish we will, we will we will come here and we will see okay whether the message has been published or not if it is not publishing like uh, uh, or or it is being published with some correct values or not all right so th that's why like it is very useful okay so that's it that's the end of the video uh, thank you